Hi, welcome to the Shelly Studio, and this video is for the Art Joy of Sharing group. And the prompt for this month was Color Cues Tips and Tricks. I'm not sure what I have um, in the line of tips and tricks, but I thought we could play with some color. So the first three colors I have here are your primary colors. Um, that means they cannot be mixed with, or other colors cannot be mixed to create them. They can be mixed together to create other colors, like blue and yellow make green, and red and blue make purple, and red and yellow make orange. Now these are not mixed colors that I'm using, I just used my uh, Delusion paints and colored a sheet for each color and thought it would be kind of fun to play around with them. So here's our color wheel. Now you can do this in several ways when you're playing with color. You can put, um, so like those are the warm colors and these are the cool colors. And then analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So that's what I'm kind of showing you there. <laughs> and then you have your complementary colors and that are that is colors directly across from each other on the color wheel. So we're just going to set that aside and we're going to kind of play with those ideas and create something interesting. Now I was, um, I saw somebody else create a video, so that is complimentary. See how strong that color just bounces off of it? And that one is analogous, um, one of the colors that sits side by side. There's another one that's analogous. It's not quite as vibrant, that one's more vibrant, but um, as the complementary colors. So I was watching somebody and they created a video of Kandinsky style. So that's where these squares and circles are coming from. Um, inspired by that video. Anyways, I'm just showing you different ways we can do it. Different color combinations. So that's that one was analogous. Alright, so we're gonna lay this out and just taking one of each color and in no particular order actually. So I just kind of mess them up, shuffle. <laughs> Looks like I'm trying, I'm not really, okay. So I'm gonna stick these down and I'm just using some, their photo, what do they call those? Anyways, I call them photo squares. Little squares to stick them on and I'll speed this through so you don't have to sit here and watch me stick the tape on the back of each of these but we'll just put those down and let's see faster <laughs> and then we'll do some playing around okay so I'm just putting these on the same color and then we're gonna shift them to be on the complementary side so that is complementary. And then this next set of circles, I'm gonna do analogous, so side by side on the color wheel. Where's my orange? There it is. All right, so that's stuck down. Now I thought it would be kind of fun just to add some black and some white, um, just to add a little contrast. And I have learned that the more color, like one color or two colors are really vibrant, the more colors you put on there, the less vibrant they appear. So when you saw one square with one circle, it seemed really bright. But when you have all of those, it seems a little less bright. But nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so um, I thought I would kind of run with that and add some different patterns and things to it. So I'm just going to play with a few more squares.
So the squares are kind of fun, but um, since we're not doing some graphic illustration, I think we should do more to it. So I trimmed them down a little bit so they would fit better on my sheet of paper. And again, I'm going to glue them down. I will edit this so it will be much faster. This time I'm not really going by primary, secondary, or complementary. I'm just doing what makes me happy. <laughs> um, if I like it, then it's good. And I that's how I've always felt about color. <laughs> and yeah, I thought I'd add some black and white in here. And then I am going to put some squares inside our patterned squares. And this one gets super, super busy, but still a lot of fun, right? And I just trimmed up all the scraps I had left of that paper and just made squares until I didn't have enough to do any more with. All right, and there we go. See, isn't that fun? <laughs> All right, so, okay, now, um, I would say practical application, but it's really not. It's just more fun playing around with color. So what I have here is some jelly prints, and these are actually jelly prints that I really don't like, except for that blue one. I did like that blue one that I just took on. Um, but yeah, I'm like, why not use them for this? You're not going to see a lot of it, just a little bit of the color. And um, I should have taken a picture. I did lay this all out and... Um, try to do the same as the first one where it was complementary and then um, analogous but it was just way too much with all the pattern on these pieces of paper so what I ended up doing is um, going for all the same color family sort of so oranges with oranges purples with purples some of them were a little more yellow orange um, but that was the plan and I think it helps keep it a little less crazy because this is a lot of pattern on these pieces of paper see like that is just a cleaned off piece of well, leftover paint um, but doing it this way with the pieces of paper and layering it those patterns look so much better than they did as a full sheet of paper. <laughs> so I encourage you to give this a try. See what you can create. Um, yeah, because it was just a lot of fun. So I encourage you to give this a try in some form or fashion. Just play around with some of your scrap pieces of paper. Or if you've got paint that's going hard in the jar, like my dilutions, um, they smear on a sheet of paper with a sponge really well. <laughs> but give it a try. Um, if you do, I'd love to see what you create. Tag me on Instagram. And thanks everyone for watching. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with all your friends. And if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe. Thanks again.